Hey everybody, it's Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. And we're gonna um, work through an Electra 220. It's very similar. All the Electras um, are really similar to each other. And um, this one has the larger carriage and it has the power return. A great typewriter. And um, these are awesome office machines. I really enjoy them and I um, also highly recommend them for kids. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to use one. Um, these are fairly common. So uh, the nice thing about these, they're usually a little bit less expensive than some of the other typewriter, vintage typewriters out there. So you probably um, may have come across one like this. And so even if you have a, a 120 or something like that, it's gonna still operate very similar to this, um, but I do have videos for the other Electra series typewriters, so you can search for those. Okay, let's start with the back. So you've got the paper holder right there, and you can just pop that down. This is called the carriage, and your paper is gonna go right back in here, all right? Um, also, to set your margins, because remember, everything is done manually on this. Now, this is electric typewriter, which means you have to plug it into the wall. There's no batteries or chargers or anything like that. So to set your margins, you just press and drag right there. Now, when you get to the end of your margin, your bell is gonna ding um, as you're typing to let you know that you're at the end of your margin. And, um, and I will show you once I turn it on, once you get to the end of your margin and you're in the middle of a word and it stops on you, um, then you have a margin release right here, and I'll show that to you once I load up some paper. Um, right here is a paper release on the right side. On the left side, you'll see a line selector. What that means is when you hit the return button, power return, it's going to advance either one, two, or three lines. Okay, let me go ahead and load up a piece of paper. Now, I'm not going to do a typing demonstration on this at all. Um, if you click on the link below, there's a product listing, and it has photos of this typewriter and also a link to a demo video of just it typing so you can see how it works. But here's your on-off button. And just turn that on. And I like to, on electrics, I like to let the motor run for about 10 seconds before I start typing. Um, you don't have to. Uh, as, you, as they get older, sometimes it takes a second for those motors to kick in. So I always just give it a few seconds. Okay, like I said before, when you're typing away, uh, let's see. There's the bell, and usually anywhere from one to five characters later, it's gonna completely stop on you. Okay, so now it's stopped on me, so I hit margin release, and I can keep typing. Okay, and so now you hit the return handle, and then you can keep going. Um, to set your tabs, so not everybody uses tabs, but some people like to. And let me see if I have any set. I have one set. So if you want to clear it, you just hit clear and that should have cleared it. Whoops, well it didn't. But the other thing you can do is hold clear and hold the carriage release and that should clear it. Let's try. Yeah, so now it cleared it. And by the way, I just realized I probably didn't tell you, this is your carriage release levers on each side. Doesn't matter which side, you just pull that in and that releases the carriage. Now, if you ever do get a typewriter and your carriage is just flopping around really loose, it's not, it shouldn't move unless you have that carriage release or you're typing on it. That means you have a, a broken draw band and you will need a professional um, typewriter repair person to fix that for you. Um, and then if the chair, if the carriage doesn't move, then that could be a variety of issues. And again, you just need to find a local repair person. Okay. Um, so to set your margins, just put your carriage anywhere you want. So let's say we want it here. We just set it and let's do another one. Let's do another one right here. Okay. Oops. I just kicked my camera thing. And uh, so let's go ahead and test and make sure. So there's the first one, there's the second one. All right, so that's how you do your 
um, tabs on this. Uh, also, remember how I said this is your paper release? This comes in handy, like if you load it and your paper is crooked, then you can adjust the paper. Just make sure you re-engage before you start typing again. All right, I'm gonna open this top up and inside we're gonna see the spools. When it's time to change the spools, make sure black is on top, red is on bottom. Um, I'm not gonna turn it, but over here, you'll see the motor turning. Every once in a while, you'll get one of these typewriters that um, it'll have this grinding sound when you turn it on. And what's happening is this motor is grinding against the side of the cover. And so all you need to do is kind of gently put, put a little bit of pressure on the cover and push it that way. It just happens, you know, either by picking it up, moving it around, sometimes the cover gets pushed over onto it. Okay, um, to change out your ribbon, you just pop it out, it's so easy. Uh, just make sure you remember how the um, ribbon is threaded and if you go to the product listing in the description below, there's a photo of this area that you can use as a reference. Make sure again that it's threaded through all the guide wires properly and that's how you do that. When you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink, so the ribbon needs to be reversed. Some ribbon spools have a little grommet, metal like circle ring at the very end of the ribbon, and that'll trigger a revert that your ribbon to reverse. Um, if it doesn't, you'll have to manually reverse it right here where it says rib rev, and you just go down, uh, well, you know, opposite of wherever it is and you should be able to go back and forth many times I'm talking 30 40 50 times before you need to change out that ribbon it should last you a really long time for those of you who need ribbons for your machine you just visit our website at jot and tittle typewriters.com there is uh, this uses a universal ribbon now if yours has the original spools and you just want fresh ribbon on it we can do that as well you just go to our website under the ink ribbons, uh, you need to order the custom ribbon option. Okay, so we've talked about the margin release. Here's your color selector. It's on black right now. Here's red. We've done the power return, your on off switch, your tabs, ribbon reversal, copy set. All that does is determine how hard these tight bars right here are gonna strike your paper. Um, also, you can do a half space, a regular space, and a power space. And then these electric typewriters have three keys that have an auto repeat. One's a dash, an X, and a period. Okay? So that should be enough information for you to get started using your typewriter. Um, if for some reason it's not working, there's always two things I encourage you to check. One, make sure your ribbon is installed correctly and it doesn't need to be reversed and to make sure your color selector is firmly on one color or another that'll take care of a lot of issues if your keys are sticky or stiff we have a um, under typewriter tips we have a video that shows you what to do with that otherwise just seek out um, a local repair person and it shouldn't cost you too much to get it cleaned up and going and if you are in the Branson, Missouri area, just give us a holler and we'd be happy to um, uh, clean up your typewriter for you. All right, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you've got one, I'd love to see a photo of it and what you're doing with it. Have a great day and happy typing.